All right, this is VGA259, and this is part two of the High Grade Universal Century Sinanju review. And in this part, we are going to go over his weapons and accessories, since he does have uh, quite a few. Let's see, which one do I want to do first? I guess I'll go with the shield first, just because I like the way it looks so much. Anyway, actually, let me move him. This is Sinanju's shield which is very very nice uh, unfortunately it's only molded in red and black so uh, I used a Gundam marker to uh, fill in these gold parts although you do get foil stickers for that as well on the back of the shield we get a uh, mounting system which is different than what the master grade came with and I actually think works a little bit better even if it doesn't look quite as good um, it's basically a c-shaped thingy that's gonna wrap around the back of Sinandra's arm and then you've got two pegs so you can mount the shield on the back of his arm or on the side. So as you'll see, there's a little slit on the back of the arm right there. We'll just plug that in. And then you can mount the shield on the side like so or on the back. Uh, one disadvantage I thought the Master Grade has was uh, that you can only mount the shield on the back of the arm. And I really wish you could have uh, mounted on the side. So. This is a welcome change for the <clears throat> high grade, in my opinion. The only downside is that this uh, piece of armor right here is obviously going to get in the way a bit when mounting it on the side, but you can work it out if you just uh, mess with it a little bit. Anyway, take the shield back off because we're not done with it. On the back of the shield, you get two beam axes. These are the retracted uh, ones and basically they're just on pegs and they can swing around. Now on the Master Grade uh, they were on a little system where you could fold them over and then swing them around without having to take them off but on the High Grade you're gonna have to take them off if you want them oriented properly to uh, do the kind of pseudo beam shield effect. Anyway you bring them around to the front and then you can take these clear yellow effect parts and put those into the beam axe handles and you've got kind of a sort of beam shield uh, effect I guess something like that or I think uh, more likely this can be used to attack just swinging the shield towards a mobile suit and with these beams out like this, uh, they're going to make quick work of anything that comes in their way. So you get these, and you also get these long beam effect parts. You also get two of those, and they fit in in the same exact way, and produce an even longer beam shield weapon. And they're actually even taller than Sosby himself, who's tall enough already. So yeah definitely a very menacing weapon right here and I guess you could you know spread those out and do it like that if you wanted to but sinandru has got that also there's one more feature that you can uh, do with the shield and bring these up into place you get a grenade launcher it's just uh, two halves that you connect together this doesn't move like it does on the master grade and you can simply, uh, let's see, right there, connect it on the bottom of the shield so you can have a grenade launcher launch, uh, mounted to the bottom of the shield. I'm going to take that off because we'll be using it in a minute. So that about does it for all the stuff the shield can do. Now, I guess since we've already gone over the beam axis, I'll continue with those. You also get two extended beam axes, which obviously use the same exact blades that uh, are on the retracted versions, and they connect in the same way. But uh, these Sinanju can hold. Actually, he can probably hold the retracted ones as well, but uh, these are the ones that are meant to be used in his hands. And you can have him wielding both of these. Uh, in each hand for a double beam sword approach if you want or you can connect them end to end to create a double beam sword like so 
This seems to be a popular theme with Gundam nowadays. You see a lot of these Darth Maul type uh, beam weapons popping up. And you get a uh, beam saber holding hand. Actually two of them. One for the right, one for the left. And being high grade hands you have to take them apart and put them back together around the hand. Just pop off this fist and put this on there and there we go. Let's see if I can back this up and you can see how long this beam weapon is. So yeah, definitely going to do a lot of damage with that. And also, let me get this out of here. You get uh, two beam sabers. It's just a red handle like so. You get a clear yellow beam, and it fits in quite snugly. Very detailed yellow beams as well, much like uh, the high-grade Sazabi. And these, you don't have to disassemble the hand. They can just slide right in. And he, Sinandri seems to hold. They're a little bit loose, but they seem to stay in pretty well. Let's see, next up is the beam rifle. First, I'm going to show you how to mount it onto the back skirt. You get a little connector like this. And if you can get these propellant tanks out of the way, there's a little tab. Actually, screw this, I'm going to pop these off. There's a little tab right here on the back skirt. You'll just remove that. And replace it with this gray part like so there we go and the beam uh, not beam saber, beam rifle just kinda clips into place on the back skirt for easy storage put these back on and beam uh, rifle actually has a couple features. Uh, the scope actually has two scopes on it. does move. This front one stays in place, but the smaller scope in the back can rotate back and forth, just like it does on the Master Grade. And uh, this bottom piece can open up because the grenade launcher that I showed you earlier can be mounted onto the bottom of the beam rifle close that back up and there we go and I actually like the grenade launcher mounted to the beam rifle just because it makes it look a bit more substantial and a little more, uh, more menacing I was really kinda hoping we would get clear parts for the scope but uh, Bandai just gave us a sticker for those so uh, that's kinda unfortunate and the very last accessory is that we get a trigger finger hand for the beam rifle it does have a peg on the handle that fits into a hole in the hand, so it should be pretty stable. You shouldn't have any problems with Sinanju dropping his beam rifle. And we just fit the hand around it like so. And pop it in the wrist, and there we go. And because this is a high grade and the parts are so light, he has no weight issues with it whatsoever. So, let's see, uh, have I forgotten to show anything off? I don't think so. Um, I guess that about does it for the high-grade Universal Century Sinanju review. This is definitely a uh, very, very, very nice uh, model kit. It's uh, on par with the other high grades from Unicorn Gundam, or Gundam Unicorn, and it's just really, really nice. Uh, the newer high grades that are coming out today are really starting to cross the boundary of uh, like the older master grades like Gundam 1.0 and Zaku 1.0 because um, this Sinanju even has kind of what appears to be uh, some sort of inner frame um, the head has a tiny little one piece inner frame to it and the backpack also has a tiny inner frame to it as well those are the only parts but uh, inner frame nonetheless and on top of that, it's uh, very, very nice looking proportion-wise. The uh, color separation is good. Um, the only parts that you're really going to have to paint or use stickers for 
are the gold details, uh, obviously. Let's see, these two small, actually four of them, small yellow thrusters on the inside of the shoulder are going to have to be painted. Uh, they give us these in yellow plastic, but these small ones right there, those will need paint. The forehead Vulcans will have to be painted gray, and I think that's it. Uh, actually, no, these tiny little thrusters on the inside of the leg will have to be gray as well. But other than that, I mean, that's just like little nitpick stuff. This is certainly a impressive looking model kit just straight out of the box. So, uh, this kit definitely gets a thumbs up for me. It's, uh, what was it, 2600 yen? Yeah. So, that's about, with the god-awful exchange rate nowadays, that's going to be a little bit over $30. So, uh, you know, if it's worth it to you to have a really nice uh, Sinanju and you're not willing to fork out for the Master Grade, this, I think, is a very nice alternative that you may want to consider. So, I guess that does it for this review, and I will see you guys next time.